Welcome to the show. This is our live broadcast of the Free Zone, and we are very excited to be here. Uh, it is Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, and it was just Earth Day, so give you kind of an idea where we're at. Well, let's go. Let's take this to the flat Earth, because we're in our final 45 minutes here, and you know it's going to take that long let's go ahead and open the flat earth door because we've already talked about mars yeah we've talked about chemtrails we've talked about all of this so when we're looking at a puzzle where everything is so unreal that everything we know is completely yeah. false there we don't know what electricity is we don't know what gravity is uh, I've never really believed that you could spin on a on a ball going 1,100 miles an hour uh, right. while traveling around a sun at 6,600 or 66,600 miles an hour. Uh, Is that yeah? What, what's the, where's the proof in the round Earth, right? So I want to understand Mars, the sun, the seasons. Yeah, I want to you know. Let's are you guys ready to dig into flat Earth? Yeah, the well, seasons. I, I, I don't have much to contribute, but I'll listen. All right. Well, like um, you know, as a as a this as is a, Watson as a precipice to just illustrate, and I'm generally speaking for the flat Earth community at large as a representative of all of these personalities that have been involved in this movement probably since the tail end of 2014. And I initially got introduced to this conversation in the spring of 2015 as I was driving across the flat plains of Kansas, which is arguably one of the flattest regions in the entire North American, you know, uh, region. Unless you're in and Lawrence. And I queued up uh, the, you know, the, the celebrated uh, uh, higher side chat show with his interview on Eric Dubé. And I like, you know, all of us who are into the alternative media stuff, I'll take in anything. Initially out of the gates, I thought it was ridiculous. I just literally laughed. I was like, oh, flat earth. People what? get angry about right. this. Right. And They're my like, general oh my God, default, I can't believe you're talking about like this. Default fallback mode was to laugh, to just brush it aside as absurd. But I rest assured if you actually weather through and sit through that that seminal groundbreaking THC interview with Eric Dubé on the legendary that that legendary show, which really that show went viral. It really set the precedent for the narrative. By the end of the show, I was screaming out the window of my van on some road trip driving across Kansas in disbelief, like, ah, what? I was just I was just flatlined, flatlined to pun intended. And I immediately immediately catapulted myself to the front line of this warrior narrative and devoured everybody from Ma Matt Powerland to Mark Sargent to the Morgile to Wakey Wakey, Eric DeBay. I mean, all of these amazing people right in the beginning of this movement. And I really, really still believe at this point when people ask me, where do I start? I'm like, start at the beginning. Like if you get into a band, start with the first album. If you're into an author, start with the first book. If you're into the flat earth, start in the mid 2015 and go back and dig out all of those really great documentaries and all the great narrative around that time. So by the time I got back home from this month long road trip, I ordered Eric Dubé's book. I ordered all the old books from the 19th century, and I just started downloading like in May, like mad, and uh, taking in this conversation at the most maddening pace I had, I've never witnessed in my search of gnosis and truth. By the end of 2015, there was I could not debunk the flat Earth model. On the contrary, I became Literally, by the end of the year, I was almost 100% convinced that the Earth was flat. And so the books that I brought here that you can see, the cool thing about this movement that I need to stress overwhelmingly is that it's based in academia. 
It's based right. in using the scientific method, using logic, reason, and common sense. It's an it's a rogue academic movement of true logic, reason, and common sense. And every single flat earth argument is based in those tenets of using logic, reason, and common sense to look out at your world and to actually see what you really see. One of the book that started this great you know, thing was the, the unbelievable Eric Dubay's book that came out in November of 2014, which is the first flat earth book published in over 50 or 60 years. And it's literally an over arching overview of every argument and concept it's very scientific it's very logical it's very matter of fact it's by the time you read this thing you will either one be on the fence or be a flat earther and i was um completely nine, almost 95 percent of flat earther at this point there's no way that you can read this book and not at least find the argument compelling now it gets better in the 18th century in 1865 Zetetic Astronomy was written. This was a book written by the legendary uh, uh, Samuel Burley Robotham here. And this is an amazing book that really suggested the, again, using the scientific method to postulate the fact that we appear to live on a flat plane. And then in the wake of that one, another book was written. Uh, William Carpenter, 100 Proofs that the Earth is Not a Globe. This was in 19 or 18... Um, 86 again an academic document you know from the 1880s celebrating this conversation and it continues 1901 and then a number of other books that came up for the present day and then the recent unbelievable book by zen garcia translating the book of enoch and the flat earth these are serious yeah. academic documents that if you're if you have an academic disposition, which I do, you will really resonate with these. So one of the things about this conversation that I cannot stress enough is that it's based in academia. It's not based it's it's not based in religion or Christianity or fundamentalist beliefs in some nonsensical, dogmatic, you know, nonsense. It's based in true academic speculation and research. So one of you can go and like research yourself. There's so many people doing it now. They're really making a point. Right. Searching it themselves. They're not just taking it, you know, at face value with some what someone's saying. They're actually going and doing the research themselves. It's amazing. I've never seen anything like it. It has right. exploded. Yeah. On it's bizarre. To, it's not only and bizarre. I think it's absolutely flat. beautiful so and liberating. And Galileo. what's that? So. Isaac Newton with the, the gravity yeah. thing and Galileo. Uh -huh. So that, yeah. that's when it shifted. Everyone prior to that thought that the Earth was flat. So that's when it actually it was designed at that point. I so think we're probably talking about a high-level uh, right. deception that's propagated by extremely wealthy um, exactly. you know, um, a consortium of unseen so forces that let's have start there. This. What would be the point of convincing us the world is round? Why would they go through so much effort to convince us right. that the world is round? I think seven, they flew over the South Pole yeah. and that's when NASA came into play for real. And and formed the uh, so that'd uh, be Admiral Byrd. Yeah, they formed the Anarchy uh, right. a Treaty to protect We're Antarctica, which is actually a right. treaty to keep the general populace from discovering. But why? There's no well, pole. I was hoping to get into some of the science first and some of the the reasons why later, but to jump right into maybe the reasons why, because honestly, if you read these documents, if you take in some of my some of what I would consider some of the most important narrative and if you also go out for yourself and use empirical observation and look at you know um go up into a plane and see the horizon line rising to the eye of the observer you go to the you know to a coastline and look out at a large distances of water and see light towers and cityscapes and see them you can actually intuitively and empirically see for yourself that it appears to be a flat plane so outside to jump past a lot of the science uh and a lot of the observation empirical observation i'd like to talk about and to jump jump into maybe the conspiracy of why they occulted this from us is i think that this 
this Copernicus deep space heliocentric big bang evolution model is to take the divinity away from us is to take yes. the source away from us it's to take us away from the fact that we appear to be you know the, we appear to be these these beautiful luminous light beings have downloaded into this avatar material body and we're having this beautiful magical experience and one of the things that i found so overwhelmingly dark about this agenda and especially if you look at scientists and any peer-reviewed scientists anybody who actually went in through academia and are peer-reviewed academic um, practitioners in whatever level it might be whether it's low-level academia scientists whatever study they might especially the astronomers the biologists and all this stuff all of them are overwhelmingly atheists and at most, maybe an agnostic. And I think that that right there is suspicious that they're pushing a model that's taking the, div the divine cosmic riddle out of it. They're taking the divinity out. They're taking spirituality out of it. And if you look at science at large, and I'm being critical here, science at large is materialist science. They do not believe in subtle energy. They do not believe in the spirit. They do not believe in hyperdimensional physics. They don't believe in metaphysical realities. They make fun of and will brush aside telepathy and clairvoyance and astral projection, all of these other very important, crushingly important topics that all of us in this alternative research community know are valid, especially if you follow some of the, the lineage of, say, uh, Dean Radin and what in the belief is happening, that celebrated documentary that came out, you know, over a decade ago now, that really suggests overwhelmingly, especially things like the Dancing Wooly Masters and the Tao of Physics and some of the stuff from the 90s era. These things were very important documents to suggest that science and mysticism can exist can exist in unison so what they're taking what this is is they're taking the mysticism out they're taking the spirituality they're taking subtle energy out they're taking our divine connection to the source out of this model so if you say i'm a heliocentric baller you know um scientist guy overwhelming you're probably an atheist you know and you're you know you're not going to believe in any of this beautiful you know spiritual narrative and again i'm not coming from a, a dogmatic christian perspective i'm not coming from any organized religion perspective i'm coming from the true esoteric gnostic tradition of spiritual gnosis and that transcends language. And I think what we're really talking about is a language that transcends language. That's the problem with using vocabulary language right now. You go into the psychedelic realm and you commune with this ancient, um, you know, this ancient narrative with, say, entheogens and psychedelics and ayahuasca, which I've done 12 times now. And I've had a communion with psilocybin at least a half dozen times. It literally you're going, you're passing past into a forbidden zone where language is not welcome. You're going into a region that's just true. It's 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 an abstract world where the only two forces are light and dark, love and fear, hate and love. You know, it's like and it's so powerful. And either you align yourself with love and you come you commit to love and empathy and compassion or the darkness will consume you. Literally, those are the only two cosmic forces we're dealing with here. As above, so below. You bring that into the material realm. You wake up every day and you're experiencing a psychedelic world, a psychedelic construct, a psychedelic holographic you know, matrix zone. And really, every day you have the choice to either align yourself with love or to align yourself with fear. And the control matrix, the control system, the thing that's bringing us this fucking fake ball earth model, this heliocentric lies, is based in fear and it's based in atheism. And if you want to believe in the fucking ball, you're going to believe in some of these dark forces, some of this black magic hex, all the stuff that Mark Passio is talking about, all the black magic, you know, occulted stuff. Apply that to the ball model. This is black right. magic in its purest form. And until you realize that, until you look at this deception, all the other stuff just does. It doesn't really you can't comprehend it until you go down this dark garden path and have your dark night of the soul and realize that we live on a beautiful, stunning, infinitely stable terra firma with the celestial heavens rotating over and above us and the sun and the moon are rotating over and above some electromagnetic you know uh north pole center and that they're only three thousand miles above the surface of the earth 32 miles across the sun and the moon are their only luminaries the moon appears to be radiating its own luminous feminine energy the sun and the moon the masculine and the feminine are in their equal status they're together in unison it's the it's the communion of the sacred masculine and the feminine just like mark passio talks about where well, you can look up into the night 
night sky and see it. You can look up in the day sky and see it. What they took about us, if you believe in the heliocentric model, you believe in patriarchy. You believe in a male-dominated construct. You believe in uh, you know, a, a solar system that revolves around the male masculine sun energy. So, and the moon has been demoted to a, you know, just a little rock rotating around a planet. Are you saying there are no other planets? I believe at this point, and again, this might sound blasphemous and totally iconoclastic and anti, um, you know, like this, this, this paradigm construct might be so shocking to a lot of people. But honestly, if you if you really gallop down this, you know, this garden path and you stay the course of truth and you're looking at logic and reason and science. Well, I'll take us down the path. OK, what appears to be the planets do not appear to be terra firma planet said you can land Freemasons on to quote Eric Dubay's uh, funny quote, but they appear to be transcendental, metaphysical, hyperdimensional, um, cymatic, electromagnetic uh, f- frequency orbs that mm-hmm. might appear to represent the seven layers of the firmament that goes up. If you follow Santos Bonacci's lessons and teachings on synchronicity and his beautiful, stunning overview of the ancient mystery school traditions that that weave together all the ancient mystery school traditions into one unified concept of a synchronicity cosmology i love this beautiful intuitive concept that each planet might represent the seven planets might represent the seven layers of the firmament as they go up so what you're dealing with here is that i was a hardcore scientist heliocentric right-brained science guy my whole life up until this fe thing a year and a half ago i was your quintessential male science guy who was into science fiction I watched ev- I devoured all the science shows. I watched Neil deGrasse Tyson's, you know, reenactment of Cosmos. I watched Cosmos as a kid in the 70s. I've watched it all. I was so into that. I was like deep level into the heliocentric model. But one of the things that I never resonated with was astrology. And as a scientist, you know, as a recovering conventional pseudoscientist who believed in the heliocentric model, I dismissed astrology right out. I never wanted anything to do with it. I thought it was quackery. I really thought it was nonsense. But now in this post FE awakening, when I look up into the night sky, I don't see deep space anymore. I don't see planets anymore. I see a transcendental, hyperdimensional, metaphysical, inexplicable, beyond language, stunning, abstract, firmament i don't know what i'm seeing but it appears to be something (laughs) so beyond description that i well up in complete awe and wonder at the night sky now and now thanks to santos's you know direction especially with some of these ideas that the planets are actually uh, are vibrating electromagnetic frequencies that emanate a certain resonance for each dimensional Do, uh, uh, layer that they're representing. So, w- in reality, what we might be looking up at into is a hyperdimensional metaphysical firmament dome with each planet representing a different layer of this dome. And it could be an ascensionist, you know, ladder up into you know true awakening or spiritual ascensionist narrative as we rise up through this, um, through this, through this so cosmic riddle. What is some of the scientific evidence that led you to change your so your beliefs from round to flat? Because that's the big one that everybody has a problem with. You know, we're looking at. People are showing, you know, well, if you look across Lake Michigan, you can see the city and you shouldn't be able to. It should have dropped off the line. Okay. We've, uh, exactly. I could go. I could literally. And, you know, some of the key points. Right. Um, some of the key points are that there appears to be no proof that there's actually any curvature on the planet or curvature of large bodies of water. So if you really look at the science, especially the science promoting and in support of the flat earth model, what you appear to be looking at is empirical data that shows that huge expanses of land appear to be completely flat. Huge expanses of ocean appear to be completely flat. And one of the most shocking things to me as an artist, and I, my father was a draftsman. He worked for General Motors. 
I grew up with my father's like draftsman table with all of his tools. I was playing with compasses and rulers as a little kid. I'm like a, you know, a, probably a third generation draftsman illustrator from the old guard. I don't even know Photoshop. All I know is old traditional draftsman techniques. And I all, literally all of my drawings and illustrations, I'm some of the visionary artists that have aligned myself with this truth narrative. All of it's based in, you know, traditional um, draftsman techniques of rulers and compasses and, you know, all that stuff. So when I came into this, I came into it as an artisan and I was looking at the math and the science. And honestly, when I was in art school, I had two years in art school where I took structural drawing perspective class. I was so over advanced in the class that the teacher didn't even know how to categorize my yield and gave me a double A plus two years in a row. That's how well versed I was in one point, two point and three point perspective with sophisticated college level structural drawing, architectural drawing. That's how good I am at this narrative. So when I came into this flat earth thing and they started talking about horizon lines and perspectives and vanishing points, it was my language. I know it. I see it. So one of the things just to jump, just to jump right to what I consider to be the smoking gun that completely crushes. And I'm just going to go ahead and come right out of the gates because there's a lot of different topics about this that I could talk about. And anybody who knows the general narrative can talk about all these things. But just to just come right to the point here and then we can kind of ease off of this as a closing you know, uh, sentiment. I really truly believe that I have demonstrable, unbelievable empirical proof that the earth is completely flat. And again, this is coming from my own empirical gnosis my own use of the scientific method my ability to use logic reason and common sense and to look out free of cognitive dissonance free of predictive programming free of what we've been taught and conditioned and brainwashed with arguably this heliocentric model hoax is this and again i'm coming at this to everybody to all the flat earth community to the people that are still on the fence to the ballers i'm really honestly coming at this with total love and compassion for the human condition i have no agenda i'm on no one's payroll i'm not a <coughs> ci operative i'm not a shill i'm just a seeker here and i'm coming from a place of true in-depth yeah. like like yeah. love for the truth you know and in in celebration of that okay one question Yes. Watson, if the, if the earth is if the earth is flat, is is there earth on the top part and then is there an under part? And that's we don't earth? know. Um, there's a lot of speculation on that. Um, one of the one of the exciting things about this conversation is that there's a lot of unknowns, which I think yeah. is, is 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 fine. You know, for instance, um, you know, to press you know, to 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 press this this conversation, um, Mark Passio at the conversation, the only time that the flat Earth again in respect for that, we just simply don't know, and that's okay. We don't know. Science always gives you definite answers for everything. It, you know, there's no speculation in science. They're like, this is our theories. This is what we know. But I think You're to on. a certain extent, we just simply don't know. And, you know, in total love and respect for Mark Passy and all the fierce research he's done for years and, you know, and all of us like tipping our hat and taking our hat off to him. He at the conference, this rogue, uh, you know, personality came up and, you know, referenced kind of, you know. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I'd say recklessly, but, you know, kind of, you know, uh, attentively referenced the very end of this uh, Q&A question. He brought up the Velop Flat Earth conversation and Bob Tuscan very rightly kind of laughed and was like, OK, finally, here we are. Let's talk about this Flat Earth thing. And I'm sitting uh, in the audience and this is like 1149 at night. We're all exhausted. It's coming on the midnight hour. Everyone's ready for a beer and to chill out and have small talk. So I knew that this was like the final moment, but it took me a second when Mark Passio jumped in and he said, you know what? The thing about the flat earth that I'm confused about is explain to me the concept of the eclipse. And that's a good question. And I'm sitting there like, you know, sitting there in the crowd ready to like respond, but also not confident or ready enough until I knew I had a convicted response or a, a response with conviction. It took me about 60 seconds to formulate a response to that. And then I took the confidence. And again, I'm not that good in front of cameras, especially at, in that context. Um, this is a little bit more intimate. I'm better with this one-on-one, -on -one, a little small group of people, but that, you know, that free your Never mind, mind the tens of thousands listening. Right, right. So <laughs> I developed, I, I was like, I'm good. At, I've got a response. And in celebration of what you talked about, of there being just, uh, we just simply don't know what's underneath us or what's above us is, um, 
I go up there and there was that guy, that really cool cat said that. And then there was a weird kind of, uh, you know, unusual cat that kind of brought up something indirect to there. And then I grabbed the mic and I was like, literally like ready to go. And part of me thinks Bob was like, no, it's Watson. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to crush it. It's one in the morning. And he, right. He either yet. saw me and was like, we can't handle this wild card, this wildfire. If he starts talking about this FE shit, cause he's going to go fucking go off. And I think, you know, in total respect and adoration for Bob, I can understand that that was an undertone, but also everybody was tired and it was time to shut it down. And they had tried to shut it down 20 minutes before, but still I had, and yeah, there were some witnesses. I grabbed that mic and I was ready to respond. So this is my response to Mark Passio and to you. We don't know what's above or below. We don't know a lot of things. We don't know in, uh, you know, in respect to Mark Passio and his conversation about, well, explain to us the, the eclipse. Like, how does I'm that work you into the flat model? It. What's that? <laughs> I say you yeah. better get to it. Right, right. So my, you know, what my response was going to be was like, Mark, we don't under, we don't really know the eclipse narrative. It could be a black sun. It could be a third luminary in the sky. We're just not quite sure. But one thing that uh, that's more important is to get to the essence of the question, whether it's flat or round. The question about the flatter conversation is, do we live on a ball or do we live on a flat plane? And from my own experience, I have two anecdotal uh, 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 experiences that I'll say very briefly. One of them is in downtown Portland, Maine. When you stay in downtown Portland, Maine on this perch that looks out over the Casco Bay, there's one spot that you can literally look out towards all the way to New Hampshire, 70 miles away as the crow flies, they like to say. And you can see the entire facade literally the entire facade of the pre presidential mountain range, the, the highest peak of the presidential higher uh, uh, mountain range there in the Appalachian range, 70 miles away. If you use their circular trigonometry, their science, where it drops an eight inch, it, it drops eight inches per mile squared, you should generally speaking at a 70 mile distance only see the top third of this mountain range. But on the contrary, you see the entire facade of it. That's to me, when I first saw that, I was dumbfounded. I'm like, that doesn't seem right. Why am I seeing the whole mountain? That's what I call a two data point observ empirical observation, two points. Your point as a conscious, sentient, homo sentient light being looking out at data point two, which is the 70 mile away, you know, peak of those mountains. And you're calculating and looking, you're doing the math, the science, the math, the science doesn't, it doesn't, isn't coherent with what you're seeing. So you shut down the cognitive dissonance and you realize I appear to be looking across a flat plane. Now, this is the thing that to me, overwhelmingly proved to me and to, I think to anybody else whose logic and really thinks about it is the argument that arguably crushes the ball model. It's the simple act of using their technology and getting buying an airplane ticket and getting on a, uh, a window seat on a bright sunny day where there's no clouds, no chemtrails, no geoengineering, <laughs> a beautiful, nice day where it's clear and you have a window seat and you can look out at the horizon at I've seen it at 35,000 feet. I've seen it at 40, 45,000 feet. It's usually in that, you know, in that little, little window, but you're literally sitting in their technology, sitting in one of their iron birds, I like to call it. And you have this beautiful, unprecedented perch in this postmodern era of sitting there observing the beautiful, stunning Gaia below and the earth below. And to your complete astonishment and amazement you see the horizon line ramping up to the eye of the observer as the horizon line is completely level with the plane now one thing's important is you always get a window seat above a wing because the wing is your okay. ruler so you see this ruler going out level with the plane and that ruler goes out and literally pierces the heart of that horizon line. It doesn't go above, it doesn't go below. And on a ball model at a 25,000 mile calculable ball model distance, that you should be looking down at a horizon line as it recedes away from you and falls down. Mm -hmm. At this vantage point, generally speaking, you're seeing about 200 miles away 
which is unbelievable distance, more so than you can see on a flat when you're down on the earth. So you're looking out at 200 miles away and the vanishing point, the horizon line is not only completely level with the plane, but it's not at all dipping down. That's what I call a two point data point observational perch. Now, this is the thing that will blow your mind, will completely flatline your main line, and arguably in, in overwhelmingly crushes the ball model. If you're honest with yourself and if you shut off your cognitive dissonance, you shut off your predictive program, you shut off this ball mirth, this, this heliocentric you know, deception, is when you look across, and it'll, you will never forget this moment, you'll sit there and – You'll turn your head and you'll look across the fuselage and you see this tiny little window. It's like a viewfinder of a camera, this tiny little window. And shockingly, the horizon line is completely level on the other side of that fuselage looking out that window. And you can imagine yourself, you know, as that third data point connecting one, two, three and you're thinking about the science and the math behind this geometry, and they, it literally creates a perfect straight line. There's zero curvature. If you use empirical observation and just logic, reason, and common hey, sense, you're looking out at a beautiful, transcendental, stunning flat plane. And that's when it hit me. When I went up there and looked it out at that, and I've done it, six times now and every single time i'm overwhelmed with joy with laughter with confusion with frustration with anger the full spectrum of the human condition will be wrapped up into one five minute moment when you have this experience and that's what they if you all you have to do is go up in a plane on a nice day and look at those three data points you the singular conscious sentient being with your empirical ability to use logic reason and common sense and the true scientific method and you look out to the left 200 miles away horizon line level and you look out to the right horizon line 200 miles away completely level and you connect those three points you can even bring a ruler i brought rulers along and i've held rulers up i've held i've held rulers up to the horizon line looking out the window i cannot find a single tiny bit of curvature so again however challenging this narrative might be that to me overwhelmingly demonstrates the fact that we live on a flat plane. Well, you and that's just definitely sparked a war in the And that's just room. one of hundreds, yeah. hundreds of proofs. <laughs> I mean, you go down the list. If you guys want to argue with this, pick up this book right here, written in 1881. 100 proofs the earth is not a globe. Come on, go ahead and pick up Eric Dubay's book. Unbelievable. He has a new book called 200 Proofs the Earth is Not a Globe. Hey, if you're really a good reader and you like your academic rogue research, Go dig into 1865. Come on, synthetic astronomy. This is the real science, the real transcendental science of this big mystery. We've been lied to. The ball model is a hoax. But there's nothing wrong with that. Just take a deep breath. Relax. It's all good. It's all good. It's all fine. We're sentient, beautiful, wonderful light beings of infinite complexity and magnitude. And this is okay. We're just in a battlefield of deception and love. And just choose love. So here's the thing. When we step out of the frequency fence that we've all been in for all the, all of these years... And we look at what's actually right in front of our faces, yeah. right? Like when we truly see exactly what what's there at face value, it's undeniable. Yeah. Like you can't argue. It's unarguable. You can't argue with it. It's like when you do the research and you make the effort yourself. Right. And I'm talking to the people in the chat room. Right. <laughs> Well, that's the you problem. Know, People say, oh, I can't believe this, and they don't even look. Right, yeah, and that's the idea of the title, that. Cosmic Lost, Conspiracy right. Triggers. They just shut down. Yeah. If you if you really want to know the truth, do the fucking research. Man. Well, let's hear what they have don't to say. Don't even do the research. Go buy a, buy a plane ticket and just go look for yourself. Yeah. Let's hear what they have to say. Yeah. One more, one more thing um, I've been wanting to say this whole time is, okay. for me, it comes down to my gut, and this is why. Because... When I was a child, my first memory is watching my cousin walk on the moon, okay? And my very first memory is, is being in a playpen looking at the television with my father and all his buddies, mm-hmm. right? 
and knowing that I was related to the person on the television. Okay. And then oh, the, the moon landing you're yes. talking about. Yeah. Because that was my first memory. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. That's my first memory. I'm Maybe serious. That is, that is my very my first memory. memory. Was watching the Vietnam War on a on a black and white TV as I was eating dinner in like 1973. They used to air. They used to put that stuff in the airwaves. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, okay, sorry. I was just blown away because I was like, whoa. It's weird, crazy. right? Yeah. And then to find to meet my cousin Neil Armstrong and to ask him questions and start drilling him and my father with questions. Oh, Neil Neil Armstrong is your cousin? I didn't know this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's what? Like, so I'm like asking him all these questions, and they're trying to shut me up. Oh wow, Neil Armstrong's your cousin. Him, like, something's not right here. Yeah, because so you don't want to talk about it. At a young age, like something is not right about this. Situation. Wow. Huh. Or they are like something's not right. And why are they trying to shut me down every time I ask a question? Okay, my dad was a top secret engineer in the navy. He's the author of the Silent Missile. It's not a joke. So I grew up in that environment. I grew up in that household. Okay, I grew up in that family, you know. And for me to have those questions and to be shut down over and over and over again, and to be, um, you know, to be inquisitive and to keep asking questions and to keep be shutting down or giving lies. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, like my whole life. You know. So now when I ask a question, I don't back down. And these are the kinds of questions I'm asking, and these are the this is the research I'm doing because in my experience of what I experience, I have witnessed some things that I feel tell me that we are living we're not living on a globe, but we may be living on a portion of an original planet. Now this is just my piece. Yeah. Um, I believe that somehow, you know, through the series of events. There was a cataclysm of sorts, and that we're now living on a portion of a planet. So it may be that there is a slight curvature, right? But that we're not living on the original planet. That it's it's a portion, a, a shard, and this is a jewel. This planet is a jewel. This plane, whatever you want to call it, is a jewel, and and it's a very special situation. I, I, we are literally the only third-dimensional uh, planet, in my opinion. I believe that all the other planetary bodies or heavenly bodies, whatever you want to call them, are actually, like you said, a hyperdimensional. There's something else going on where we're, we're looking at frequency waves. Yeah, OK. Jupiter, you know, so the, moving. the audience has a question about pilots. Are they involved in okay. some major conspiracy? Yes. No, definitely, now? absolutely not. Absolutely. I think that pilots, like all of us, just go along to get along. I don't think that, I think the conditioning is Not so all deep. Pilots, but most I don't think pilots. they know or ever even thought about it. As far as I know, when I, I was on a pl flight with this Eric Dubé book and I was reading it voraciously. I've actually read it twice, but at one time I was flying out to Colorado and back and I actually came up on, on some pilots during a, a break where I was at some cafe and we were in an airport and I walked up to them with total conviction and confidence and a sense of recklessness. And I presented this book to a pilot and was like, Hey, have you heard about this flat earth conspiracy? And I just wanted to ask you, do you compensate for the curvature of the earth by dipping your plane down every 60 seconds to, you know, curve around this arch? Or do you just level it out? He's like, no, we don't do anything. We just put it in automatic um, right. uh, cruise control and we just sit back and watch the gauges and if you this is the other thing that's on, on the note of that if you get into a plane and actually do this three point observation and you look out and see the horizon line rising to your, to your eye on both sides and you are actually honest with yourself and you connect those three points and it appears to be a straight line and not a curve the other thing the other exercise intellectual exercise is to imagine that just to feel you flying completely level you never compensate for the curvature by dipping down. There's never right. any feeling of the plane dipping down. And I'm into mechan I'm into cars. I I like fast cars. I like uh, I like technology. I would feel the momentum of a dip. Nothing. You're completely level and flat, flying over a flat level plane. And as far as I know, I think the uh, I think the uh, um, I think the pilots are just as ignorant as we are. And probably there's a lot of pilots right now that are waking up to this that are fucking scared. That don't want to say a word because they're afraid. Oh, yeah. It's like being a pilot and saying you saw a UFO. Okay, you'll so, be dismissed. Uh, one of the comments is the reason your visual horizontal line horizon line argument is false 
is because the way the light bends when you're looking oh, here over we got a large refraction distance. again these arguments of refraction are, i think are brought up and if it bend why didn't it bend the other way why don't we get a convex solution why don't we get more of a concave one why does it actually create the illusion that it's a straight line if you want to bring you know ideas like that into it why does that amazingly bend the light to appear to be a straight plane isn't that anomalous i mean that i understand be, yeah that's, I, that's I understand the anomalous. sentiment but it's it's a kind of a ridiculous <laughs> argument Again, you're falling into predictive programming, into cognitive dissonance. You're wanting to resolve this problem with the conditioning brainwashing of the heliocentric model, which is using the false science of, say, the refraction of this type of thing, which I, again, appreciate. But in the context, I don't think it's accurate with this observation. But, but you are saying that the other bodies, <laughs> such as the moon and the sun, are round. Well, again, we're not really quite sure if they're spherical or if they're a disc or what kind of effects happening. Again, I'm speaking from or is a it position. just a projection, as Sarah Lisa is saying? I I don't think uh, I, I think the projection model is a speculative, but yeah, and you can bring in some of the holographic stuff into it and some of that uh, narrative. But as far as we can see from a materialist perspective the sun and the moon appear to be some kind of transcendental luminaries that have some kind of electromagnetic energy field and whether they're spherical or, um, or a, you know, a disc shape is open to speculation. But again, I don't think that should, that's the question. The question is, is it flat or round? Right. And, and from my empirical observation, or when I get up else. and see it, it's now Okay. No, again, outside of question. something else, again, that's speculation. We're just Could looking, cube. we're just trying to bring it down to the basic essence of this argument. Is it flat or is it round? Do we live on a ball earth or is it a flat plane? Now, and wait. when I look out at the, you know, the, wow. at, when I look out at the horizon line and, uh, you know, from the from the perch of Portland, Maine, I see a flat plane when I see the entire facade of Mount Washington presidentials. When I'm up in a plane and I see these three data points of both horizons, I see a flat plane. There's no other way around it. It's empirical observation. It's logic. It's reason. It's common sense. I'm creating a straight line. It's Euclidean geometry. And the other thing, just in argue in defense of the hyperdimensional metaphysical reality, I have a long, rich history in the 90s and my early 20s of being an intense astral projection practitioner that actually walked through the halls of Robert Monroe's uh, uh, Institute of Applied Science and almost took one of his, you know, one of those courses there. I read all Robert Monroe's books. I have a whole, I could do a whole show just in astral projection. And every single time I lifted out of my body, every time, single time I, I, I flew over the conscious plane in a lucid, conscious, sentient light being flying over the astral plane, it was always a flat plane. As above, so below, the ancient hermetic adage, hyperdimensional physics is based on plain physics. It's not a ball model physics. So if you rise up out of your sleeping body, what do you see on the fifth dimension? You have to get them off of the fourth dimension where the archons and the ghosts and the incarnate spirits rise up to the fifth dimension where they can't be. And what do you see? A beautiful, stunning, flat plane Euclidean geometry, exactly how it is on the material space. So we're dealing with a reality here that celebrates so the spirit world, which appears to be a flat Euclidean plane, astral plane, and the material world, which appears to be a flat Euclidean material plane, as above, so below. It's basic. It's right in front of your face. It's transcendental science. It's not the pseudoscience of this bullshit ball model nonsense that we've been tricked into believing. I can tell you right now, the argument's done. We live on a flat plane. The ball model's a lie, period. End of story. I don't care what kind of speculative nonsense you want to talk about on whether the moon is a is a sphere or a disc or whether it's built, you know, whether it's a holographic, you know, uh, a crow 777 lunar wave or whether you think we've got Freemasons landing on the moon or whether there's, you know, uh, Richard C. Hoagland's, you know, bases on Mars or whatever other nonsense you might want to, you know, gallop down that support the, the this 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 ball model nonsense. As far as I can tell. I think overwhelmingly from the heart and with love and with conviction, it appears to be flat and full of beautiful wonder and awe and mystery. And it's more stunning than ever. And you know what? I went, when I listened to Manly P. Hall's nine-hour lecture talking about the ancient teachings, the, the mystery school teachings of the Manly P. Hall narrative, I was dumbfounded about two-thirds of the way in when he spent an entire hour talking about the flat plane and the luminaries above from a flat earth cosmology. Manly P. Hall actually talks about at length 
about the flat earth cosmology and so do all the ancient mystery school traditions all the ancient mystery all the ancient mystery all the mystics and sages it's all flat earth cosmology the only bullshit we've been fed about this ball earth model is some high level masons with lineage from europe over the last 500 years have been spinning this copernican galileo newton neil degrasse tights tyson bullshit it's a big lie. Just as just as much as all the heavy black magic you want to look at in occulted, you know, um, literature, occulted history, occulted music. Go down the garden path of of celebrity black magic psyops or uh, uh, Dave McGowan's, you know, weird tales inside the canyon or whatever kind of thing you want to gallop down. We're talking about a collection of high level sorcerers that have been tricking us to believe all of these false narratives, and one of them overwhelmingly is the baller passionate absolutely passionate Very Watson. Passionate. and and you know this is this is not a topic you're going to prove tonight it's uh, you've opened the door you've now laid out what people can do to start and you've laid out why and the understanding of why they would put us in this ball earth to remove the divine and you're showing how the mystery of life is so much more important yeah. <laughs> than anything. Like people are like, well, why does it even matter? The ball's flat, it's flat, it's round. Why does it even matter to me? And it does matter because of our divine connection yeah. to the whole thing and the mystery that it opens. So I'm going to cut in right now and just say, folks, you're listening to the free zone. Uh, absolutely visit freemantv.com to get way deeper into all of these mystery topics because we cover them all right here. Tune in Monday nights, 9 p.m. starting in May, uh, right here on Blab and on freemantv.com for our new live broadcast where I'm going to bring you the wildest people you can possibly imagine <laughs> and open the door to you for all the communication that can go on. I wanted to put in this station identification real quick because what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these guys just keep going. And uh, basically, <laughs> this is the end of the show. <laughs> and I want to thank you all for tuning in. And we're going to keep the show going as long as these guys want to stay in. But I'm going to have to bounce out for a minute, you know, get another glass of water, do yeah, those kind of things. Could and you fill me up? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I want you to keep going. I want you well, guys to keep going as long I, as you want. But uh, I want to throw in just a couple of things. Check out the new band, the Kevin Spacey Experiment.com. Which I'm going to make you a sigil for that. Yes. A really yes. beautiful sigil for that. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, guys. I, I, I think I'm... Are we are my favorite new band. Yeah, absolutely. And check out stonerai.com if you yeah. really want to get offended because I'm producing that as well. And this is a cannabis variety show that's hoping to end the prohibition, end all this madness, end the mind control, open your mind. So the Kevin Spacey experiment is rocking and Stoner Eye is coming. And freemantv.com is never going to stop. We are on our 11th year anniversary, and I don't see any slowing going down. So uh, I wanted to thank you all for tuning in. I'm going to butt out for a minute, and I'll be back to check in on what's going right, on in just, just a second. Just, yeah, just I'll get you a drink. drink. All right. And, uh, I'm going to say a few things real quick. Um, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Hollow Earth. If you want to come a lot back of or... people asking about the Hollow Earth in the chat box, chat room. Um, I think it's disinformation. I think it's um, false. I, I'm Hollow sure Earth? Yeah. yeah I, I, true, but I, there are a lot of people who have had experiences that um, yeah, yeah. would prove otherwise. Um, and, okay. and, you know, here's the thing. Um, like I was saying earlier about gut instinct, it's like I don't necessarily know if the Earth is flat or round. I don't know yeah. that yet. I don't know that yet. I, I do know that what we're being lied to, and I do know that I'm going to keep asking questions yeah because i feel it's really really important to ask those questions and so it's it's not about whether or not we have credentials it's not whether or not we are um, experts in this field it's that we're asking the questions and that's what's yeah, important absolutely. here and yeah. um in my experience i lived in mount shasta for three years and oh, you know, wow. there's an inner earth city there the capital of the absolutely. network there's many books yeah. written about it thousands a thousand year old book you know there's there's a lot of information about the hollow earth and the inner earth now i think i i think that the hollow earth still and the mammoths and the dinosaurs yeah. and all kinds of information about that so we could talk about that i think you just have to 
I think you just might have to flatten the hollow earth and turn it into like a just basically instead of the globe model with the hollow earth narrative it's just underneath, and uh, it's there. just yeah it's still there there's it's still, still there. maybe some right. some terrestrial uh, under uh, uh, you know uh, I, communities down there but it's just not in the context of the ball model so correct. I think a lot almost all of the models and all of this um, conversation that happens that doesn't fit into the ball model or the heliocentric model you can easily translate that and put it into the flat plane model so the hollow earth theory i think still resonates but you just have to just you know flatten it out and it's still just as beautiful it's just as mysterious just as you know it's just as important but yeah you just it imagine it it is possible that it was a larger planet the size of jupiter it is possible that it was at one point a larger spheroid and then yeah. was exploded and because they talk about Maldek, they talk about Tiamat, they talk about all these ancient planets. That's the Joseph Joseph P. Farrell Cosmic War narrative, which I was heavily into for years, and I still really enjoy Joseph P. Farrell's work. But again, um, just to uh, I just at There's this point, I'm not sure that. if that that um, the solar I'm system sure model really holds up in this, but it still. I don't know if the solar system model holds holds up either, because when I look at the sky now, I, I have a totally different. Like you said, I have a totally different perspective now, and like I will stand out there and look, yeah, and experience, you know. But for me to talk about there not being any planets for me that doesn't resonate because of what my experience okay. has been, and also. Somebody mentioned in the chat room about um, the people that have come out about in the secret space program and have come out about um, being having seeing a spheroid Earth. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and, and for instance, the secret space program, the you know, the Richard Dolan kind of um, uh, uh, trajectory and stuff and some of the people that have propagated those ideas. Again, it still holds up in this. There could still could be a breakaway civilization. There still could be an elite that's in control of the is. technology and in control of the propulsion systems and the free energy technology and most of the UFO stuff. But I, you know, from the belief now at this point that maybe there's other in the flat earth model, there's a there's a there's a thing they call the um, the the uh, like the. Um, um, uh, the the um, puddle model where there might be other geodesic thermo systems around that we're traveling to and that one of the things they might be doing why they've hidden the land from us and why they've occulted and hidden Antarctic ice wall around us which in the flat model is a 67,000 mile ice wall perimeter with the oceans level and flat and that they might be hiding land from us so they could be using this breakaway technology this breakaway thing this breakaway idea of traveling over and across an ice plane to other geothermal systems again it's all speculation, but all of this stuff is speculation. The Joseph P. Farrell yeah. Cosmic War stuff, speculation. The stuff about, you know, if you go down to the – a lot of it's just – speculation based in a lot of people's intuitive channeled you know spiritual uh you know experience that may support some that of comes these up for me it's all the rv all the remote viewers mm -hmm. and all the people that actually travel why is it that they can't actually see earth when they go out that's a good question that's what i want to know well again because there's some kind of a there's some kind of a frequency fence or something yeah. that's been placed you know in the mental whatever you you know, with their projections of mind control, that there's something that they're doing so that people can't actually see the truth yeah. of what's going on. They have some kind of a frequency fence that they've created Michael, so nobody can remote view Mike, the planet. Michael Tazarian talks about that and some other researchers that there should, could be some kind of shield or force field that keeps us from seeing what's really happening. But yeah, it's a, a great questions too. Uh, again, at this point, I think to a certain extent, a lot of this stuff is is uh, is it, it slightly shifts a little bit in the post FE narrative, but still is important and still adapts pretty easily. You just have to slightly rearrange the chess pieces a little bit. So yeah. a lot there's not one topic that I've. It's not necessarily flat. It may be that it's curved. Yeah. You know. So when people hear that it's flat, they kind of. They can't from again, from that information. From my observation, it appears to be flat. I don't see any curvature, whether it's convex or concave. So again, I'm just saying from my sure. perch at forty thousand right. feet up Maybe in the it air. Has the size parameters that what they're talking about that it has, but let's say it is a portion of an original planet that was much larger, like Jupiter or Mars, then. <laughs> then that's still possible for that to be almost completely Right. Flat. Again, you're getting into speculative territory, and I'm not 
or... Yeah. Though, though yeah. these are fun to entertain and to think about, it's uh, it, it goes yeah. beyond my you ability to observe. I, and that they're great questions, but um, I, I think one of the... I mean, I've observed the same thing that you have in terms of the, the flatness, right? right? I have observed that. I, I think it's important, though, in this That's Flat Earth conversation to separate observation, empirical observation from speculation. Right. And though I totally resonate and respect sure. and totally appreciate and can gallop down any trajectory you want, what you're talking about, though, is a little more speculative than, say, just observing that the Earth appears to be flat. So... The overarching essence of, say, my message tonight to a lot of people that might be new to this is that if you distill this down to its essence, you can actually observe on the coastline of any body right. of water uh, what appears to be a flat ocean body as you look out at cityscapes or at light towers or at islands that you should not be able to see on the ball model using their circular trigonometry of an eight inch drop squared per mile or when you go up into an iron bird and look out at the horizon line you should not see the horizon line rising to the eye of the observer not only in one direction but both directions as the line of sight completely creates a perfect straight ruler clean euclidean straight line so again i'm just presenting all the only thing that I, that empirical science, true scientific observation to just suggest that it appears to be flat. So, yeah, I, I love it to did. gallop into the speculative oh, territories, but I just need to delineate for the audience that your theories are fun to talk about, but I'm trying to keep it into the basic science of observing. Sure, absolutely. But there, there are a lot of questions being asked in the chat room. Absolutely. And, and which I don't even know how to do that. Freeman abandoned me and there's like, I don't even know what to do over there. So uh, if you guys want to jump in and say something. Maybe, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, don't even... Don't even worry about the chat room. Well, and you know, the thing about this whole conversation, too, is that we didn't even bring up the prospect that, you know, the, the Apollo moon landings appear to be demonstrably false, that maybe Stanley Kubrick, uh, you know, was the hired hand to, to film these things, that uh, Room 237 <laughs> and, Jay, and Jay Widener's uh, Kubrick's Odyssey, Part 1 and 2, overwhelmingly suggest the narrative that the, that, the mooning, that the moon landings were false. And then that brings it up into the modern context, where if you seriously look at the international ISS space station, and all the video footage and stuff it's suge when you really look at the footage it appears to be you know cgi construct it does not appear to be yes. real footage and then on top of that if you really think about this concept of satellite culture or the fact that there might be seventeen thousand satellites anywhere from 15 to twenty five thousand satellites spinning around a globe at seventeen thousand mile miles an hour as the international space station is spinning seventeen thousand mile seventeen thousand miles an hour as the earth is spinning a thousand miles at its equator where there is the unbelievable culture of video footage of of cameras on these satellites as they're looking down at the earth with all these satellites racing past them. I'm a visual artist. I know if you have a satellite in space and you spent $10 billion to get that thing launched up there, you're going to have a camera on that thing and you're going to have somebody in control of that thing making sure you don't run into any satellites. And you're going to have a camera in every corner looking out to make sure you're not running. They're like up there, like, uh, you know, it's like a bunch of blind drivers that are blindfolded racing around a, a racetrack. 17,000 miles an hour and they can't even see where each other are and amazingly no one ever crashes into each other you never hear of satellites crashing into each other on the contrary you never even see one piece of video footage being streamed of one of these high powered you know high cost corporate satellites with a camera on it giving us a permanent feed of the earth as other satellites are racing around it i want to see footage of a satellite looking down at the earth and you see like you know, the vestiges of like 10,000 satellites scattered all over the place. Where do you, there's zero, not one, zero, zero footage of that stuff. And as an artist, there would, I would, if I was a photographer, which I have a history of being a photographer, I would literally, if I was an established photographer who's in the space, I would, I would pay to have a GoPro camera or a whatever camera, a high powered camera, like, hey, let me mount one of my cameras on there so I could take beautiful photos of the earth with your camera on your satellite and I'll pay you $10,000 dollars a month just to have my camera on there so i can start taking snapshots of this beautiful earth we live in where are those books of satellite photographers with their cameras mounted to satellites it doesn't exist it's zero Here's satellites are a false construct how iss is a been out? how come nobody's been out in space 
right? We've got Elon Musk, and he's trying to get everybody to go to Mars. He's a sh you know, I like think he's controlled. I mean, right. I think he's the new face of NASA. Elon Musk is is compromised. Far enough to see for themselves without getting caught or, or shut down or whatever. Well, that's the other thing. If you really if you try to go to the South Pole, they're not going to let you. Right, go. right. I think shut what's important down. here is the absence of footage of what we would right. think would absence. be real footage. Like if there actually was an Elon Musk SpaceX mission to Mars or if they actually did launch these satellites. Show me one footage, one camera angle from the International Space Station showing a rocket ship coming out of the atmosphere of the Earth as it's bringing a satellite or a payload to ISS. There's not one. There would be hundreds of them. There would be a whole right. culture around people observing these permanent camera perches on the ISS and on all these satellites of the most incredible footage. You can't find any of it. All you see actually is a bunch of bullshit CGI fake footage coming from the ISS. Or prior to this ISS hoax, you had you know one blue marble film from the Apollo moon landing from 1972 that they pushed all over the place up until 2012. That was the only image of the Earth. And why isn't there, okay, hold on. Why don't they have a fucking Starbucks on the moon and some resort up there where a rich elite can go up there and Watson, there's a guy trying to ex be accepted to call in. Do you see that? Say it again. I don't. Okay, on the computer. No, honestly, I need Freeman. I do this. Uh, Freeman. 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 <laughs> honestly, I'm like a Luddite, man. I'm an old school. Hey, um, do you want to maybe invite somebody in on this thing? She's asking that there's somebody that wants to get in on this. Right. Do you see somebody you cool? All right, we got Seaman. We, we, uh, we got Freeman. Ah! We got Seaman back. We got Freeman back. Do you want to pick somebody? What do we got? Okay, we're going to pick a, uh, somebody to come in on this because I'm ready to well, handle anything. NASA, I'm not NASA sure uh, there's anybody calling in right now. Okay, cool. Well, maybe she was uh, she had an illusion. Is there anybody? Oh, but yeah, yeah, somebody was saying in the comments that we are new to Blab. This is very true. This is a very true statement. We are brand new to Blab. Well, what, okay, what is this? Blab is actually, actually the first Blab, so he doesn't even know he's on Blab. So uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I realized that we are learning how this all works right now. Um, so. You know, Alonzo's in the audience there. He's helping me. Uh, I'm talking to Vito. Vito, does it You know, he's Alonzo's here helping me through this whole thing. But basically, it shows up here if somebody calls in. Okay, cool. And, so uh, we're fine. Uh, as, I don't know. But somebody was saying something like uh, that you need to accept people or something. But, yeah, we don't know. Jack about Blab. This is my first Blab. Who's this? And we will be learning. That's Alonzo. He's our helper. Okay. He is uh, here to to help help everyone and explain Blab to us. Hey man, um, uh, just be. Hey Alonzo. It's cool, man. Whenever you will have a question, forward slash Q, oh. directed to whomever. Be selective who you allow on. Also, you know. So, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hey, not. I'm not sure how to. I can uh, now. Yeah, we're you know this is an open forum. I I'm open to you know taking them on, bringing it on. You know. Yeah, but you don't want no one mooning. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll shut them down. Hey, we know how to hit the X. <laughs> Everything's going good, guys. Just uh, uh, I'm, well, here, I'm here in the background, man. Just keep it going, you know. Yeah. Cool. Right on. <laughs> Peace. Well, in in in, in defense, uh, on a closing note, because I'm not sure how long this is going to like um, uh, uh, taper onto, but what the flat Earth community is outside of a lot of the misconceptions is actually what I consider rogue academia. It's very academic. It's very logical. It's very reasonable um, observation of just looking out at what we appear to see, which is a appears to be a flat stationary terra firma. And uh, there's it is actually one of the most exciting and in depth conversations conversations and studies that you can research because it's so multifaceted and so beautiful and me being a visual artist in the in in my defense on the effect of its hat on me when people say well what does it matter if it's flat or round or if it's a cube or a triangle or uh you know and to me it matters because i resonate with as an artist wanting to make artwork that celebrates this 
beautiful what appears to be a flat model. So I'm actually right. making artwork. Did yeah, you yeah, show this off? Yeah, yeah, here we go. So this is one of my probably arguably one of the first flat earth maps illustrated in a hundred years. Um, but it's, uh, you know, this welled up deep within me in the, in the, in the, in the wake of this conversation and I'm making flat earth artwork. Let's take this. Yes, uh, we did that. Actually did that artwork. And have a look at this flat earth map. Yeah. So this is, this is why it's important. This is why it's so crushingly important is that to me, it resonates at a deep soulful level of pure, just like, uh, of like transcendental intuition. And here I am celebrating this idea that we might live on. A, you know, on a, on a plain model, and it, it it's affected me as a visual artist in the most profound way imaginable. And this other one, I've got a few other pieces too, but this one here. Make sure to share your website as yeah, well. Yeah, this one Other here is another you. one I did that actually has a symbol that I gifted to the International Flat Earth Research Society, Eric Dubay, as a gift. But that symbol right there is actually in uh, in direct response to the United Nations occulted UN flat Earth map hidden in plain sight. And I actually did one for the resistance. And can you see the arrows there pointing the uh, to the uh, to the you know to more more land that they're hiding and the ice wall perimeter and the sun and the moon rotating over and above. This appears to be maybe not accurate, but closer to a model of this cosmology than we've, than we've come to believe in. And so then, Antarctica would circle the, the plane that uh, has us. Yeah. Uh, this is basically Antarctic ice wall, which would be a 67,000 mile ice wall perimeter occulted in game of Thrones, uh -huh. uh, pre predictive programming to be associated with that. And this ice wall perimeter is actually holding the oceans in level and flat. And the sun and the moon rotate over and above. And the sun has thawed out this geodesic system is bringing us life and sustenance. It's keeping the oceans, hmm. you know, from freezing. And out here appears to be an ice plane. This appears to be some ice field that might actually have other geodesic systems you know scattered around no. and that the that here's the thing that creates the seasons the sun and the moon seem to oscillate back and forth between the tropic of capricorn and the tropic of cancer creating uh. the solstice so the winter solstice at december 21st is where the sun and the moon and their southern terminus and stop rotating and then they start their spin backwards at the summer at the spring equinox uh, it's uh, in this middle part and in the summer solstice of June 21st, it stops here in the northern territory and brings the brings uh, summer to the north northern regions. And then the summer solstice, it stops and slowly starts at six months March back to this uh, to the so it oscillates back huh. and forth in a six month cycle. All right. And the 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 uh, you know, the North Pole is actually the center of what appears to be some 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 geodesic electromagnetic, you know, uh, a system that's causing the sun and the moon in this beautiful cyclical clock-like procession. And then the firmament and the stars above are rotating over and above that. Okay, so now as... What's that? Can you repeat that about the seasons? Because that... Just, can you yeah, this is one of the most beautiful things about it. And the more you get into it, the more I've learned about the, the heliocentric. I know more about the ball model now than I've ever known before. And I know more about what appears to be the true transcendental model of the flat earth. But this, um, the sun is here and the moon is here. And this line here, and this is a symbol I created again for Eric Dubay's uh, flat earth um, uh, International Flat Earth Research Society in like the middle of last thing. So the sun and the moon, the outer perimeter of that sun it would be the Tropic of Capricorn. And the inner circle that, you know, is closer to the center point, closer to the um, uh, North Pole Center would be the Tropic of Cancer. And in a six month cyclic you know, cycle, the sun and the moon oscillate back and forth, creating the seasons. And that's what's really creating the seasons. So right now, we are mm. just actually past the equinox. The equinox is the distance between the two, uh, between the true, the, between the two uh, cap, but you know, the, tropics. But it's in an elliptical curve. Is that what you're saying? Like it's, it, it, it spirals in closer and then it. Yeah, yeah. It spirals in closer and speeds up and then it spirals back out. And that's one of the things, too. I have that map. If you, uh, I've got a map that I designed for uh, Santos Bonacci's research on synchronicity. And this actually map is full of all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, he's just showing you a little bit. You might have to step back because it's so big. But this map here, actually, let's take it back a little bit. Um, this map here, which, you know, again, we can showcase on, you know, in, in another format. But here we've got the sun and the moon rotating over and above 
the center point, which is Mount Maru or North Pole. This dot line represents the equator, the equinox, which is the equal distance between the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. So the sun rotates right here. It's the equinox, which would be the the you know the two equinoxes but here's the winter solstice and the spring solstice as they oscillate back and forth these are actually all the 12 zodiac signs which i've become really into astrology now since this thing these are the seven transcendental planets to suggest the seven layers of the firmament these are the four elements in alchemy here uh this is the ecliptic that he talks about um this is also one of the beautiful things about the about the um uh, the yin yang symbol. Can you see the yin yang with the dot and yeah. the dot and that occulted yin yang? The yin yang is supposedly an ancient uh, flat earth model too, with the sun and the moon rotating as they rotate over and oh, above God. the flat plane. Yeah. This right here, these arrows suggest more land. This PP suggests the primal plane. The moon right here and the sun. See the radiating energy coming off the circle. So this is the sun energy. This is the moon. This is the masculine. This is the feminine. Uh, what else is put inside here? This is the ice wall. Per, this is the ice wall perimeter, the Where North Pole, the Sun and the Moon, the tropics, um, and then some subtle sacred geometry. You can see the circle, the square, the triangle. You get the feminine, you know, uh, uh, the alchemy feminine, the masculine. So you get the the unity of the sacred masculine and feminine. To you know, to tip our hat to that communion between those two and some of Mark Passio's work. So this is actually one of my designs a f an occulted flat earth map that's meant to be for the resistance, for this true gnosis, for our awakening, for white magic, communion with this great cosmic riddle. What about the arrows? Uh, these are supposed to suggest other land. There's actually four arrows for the four directions, also for the four the four directions and also for the four elementals and also to suggest that what I really like about this concept is the fact that they appear to be hiding land from us. So that also weaves in this idea of a breakaway civilization. Well, what about you know? Atlantis? I'm Atlantis completely Atlantis fits right into now. this. Absolutely. Atlantis can absolutely weave itself right into this We're conversation. We're on Atlantean land right now. This brother. is the Atlantis shelf I'm working on. Yeah, right no, here. absolutely. Atlantis, it doesn't really change anything. You just change the model. You make it, you make the cosmology flat instead of instead of spherical it really doesn't change a, a lot of things you just have to change the map uh, when we had jeffrey grup on he discussed the possibility of a dome over this flat plane and it made me feel like we were in some sort of alien terrarium yeah maybe some sort of alien experiment uh, are you, do you know the dome theory? I, I definitely listened that? to that interview and I thought it was a fantastic interview and I really like his concept, but he's coming from the perspective of a biblical, you know, of, of a Christian um, theist who's uh, who's interpreting the Bible from a literal perspective. And though I'm, I, you know, hats off to all the Christian researchers and stuff, and I'm a huge fan of the Morgile and Rob Skiba and his Steve work. Did really good, yeah. I mean, fantastic research, and I'm completely sympathetic to that stuff. But as a general rule of thumb, I would consider myself more of a synchronist and more in the Santos Bonacci camp uh, because I believe that the real truth is maybe occulted and hidden in all the ancient scriptures. So he's coming from a Christian perspective of translating and interpreting the Bible literally, which suggests the firmament and the waters above. I see. I'm coming from a synchronist perspective of a hyperdimensional physics of um, something that transcends language and it's beyond description. It's not as uh, it's not as black and white as say some of the uh, as some of the you know some of the Christian um, literalist you know pre you know uh, uh, present. But again, at this point, it's it's all it's all philosophical speculation. It's all academic revelry to a certain extent. What the real true essence of this conversation is, and what we always need to keep this perspective is. Is it flat or is it a ball? And outside of that, I really true believe from my empirical, you know, observation that it appears to be flat. Outside of that, it's a big mystery whether it's a firmament, whether there's, you know, from the from whatever perspective it might be. It's not until you know we 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 our our bodies are turned to ash and our spirits rise up in some ascensionist, you know, ladder will we maybe know our our, our true nature. All right. Well. Just to throw in and allow uh, some final comments from uh, Sarah Lee and uh, Sean, you know, uh, want to make sure that you're not forgotten. And I, I saw your little cockadoodle there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, come in with something. Let's hear some final notes. Let's wrap this up. Hmm. I, got, I have a question for you, Walker. Yeah, go go for it, Bob. Uh, 
I, when you said Eric Dubay's name, my ears perked up because I recently started uh, watching him. I don't have any of his books yet, but I recently started watch, watching him. I think he's brilliant. And uh, the question I have is, how flat is flat? Is it like paper thin flat? Eight miles. I think it. Flat? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. Again, I think it's a uh, flat is relative. If you calculate the ocean waves, you know the rise and flow, the ebb and flow of the oceans, that's not flat, but it's relatively flat. The uh, you know the highest mountains, Everest down to the valleys, those are peaks and ebbs in like the geography of the land. But when you you know when you come up to the perch of say forty thousand feet and you look down at the at the earth, it appears to be relatively flat outside of you know the mountains and valleys and the the oceans you know thickness of the oh the actual thick itself there was a russian uh the russians in the 1980s were only able to dig down um again this is uh just from memory but the russians in the 80s were able to dig down only eight miles into the terra firma and all their tools broke down they couldn't dig any deeper so the farthest that any technology has ever been able to dig is eight miles and it's probably safe to say that if the elite have you know uh, dumb deep underground military bases if the elite have gone in and dug into the earth and built all kinds of complexes to hide in and retreat to if there is a hollow earth you know narrative that can be uh, translated into a flat model, it's probably safe to say it might just only be a few miles down into yeah. what I would consider um, a, a terra firma materialist point. When it comes to Santos Bonacci's work on looking at at his theories, he actually presents this idea that we live in a solar cell opposed to a solar system. And when you look up at the firmament, you see these beautiful transcendental what appears to be seven layers that are connected to the seven planets which i really intuitively resonate with i just think it it has a something i connect with and I in the same so. way has something yeah in the same it. way it might go down below to seven layers of of this of, of a far of, of a some kind of so hyperdimensional stuff that goes down so his model is actually maybe a spherical um solar cell which is a neat metaphysical philosophical construct to at least speculate on and one that I really like. And also yes, one sir, that all the ancient them. mystery school traditions mention. And also Hieronymus Bosch has his only flat earth painting that suggests the solar cell model. That's an interesting picture from Manly P. Hall oh, dealing oh, with that. Very fantastic. Thing. There we go. There's the yeah. spherical, there's the layers, there's the, the sun. There's the yeah right there you know is is the essence of. Now this is a book known as the Phoenix uh, mm -hmm. by Manly P. Hall. Uh, of course, I can pull off all kinds of things in this. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, impressive. Along with my Mouseketeer official I must uh, say, certificate. <laughs> <laughs> I must just say I'm in awe of Freeman's book collection here. It is dauntingly impressive. And then I just want to. Of acid, uh, <laughs> through the looking glass we were talking about that, it so it's, it's well like, look oh. at oh that is great look at that one of my is collections it, from tour i wish it was oh, dipped careful with it please that's worth yeah. hundreds of dollars i've got a few i've collected over the years but nothing like that no no the i'm sorry yeah. all right, so i know that sarah lisa's dying to say something. all right all right let's go no the flat sarah, earth model yeah. and the hollow earth model are not necessarily inconsistent they could they could exist at the same time. Oh, I completely agree. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's, and I, you know, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Just a matter so, of shifting so. the model slightly or Here we dramatically. Go. Um, I've been watching the chat room this whole time, <laughs> and it's probably not a good idea for me to be doing that, but I'm, um, <laughs> I don't even know well, how to watch it. So fired up. Let me tell you, I'm getting a kick out of it. It's pretty cool. Um, so for me, it's like, here, here's my final say about any of this. Oh, I, oh, actually, I'm starting to see some of these comments. Um, Go ahead. So for me, it's like, start asking the questions, you know, that we need answers to. It's not that any of us have the answer. That's just what I want to say about that. I don't necessarily think that I have the answers to any of this stuff, actually. I'm still in the question asking phase of all yes, of this, it's, it's, personally. It's all, it's all like nonsense. You know, and, and well, I, yeah, that's so it's the whole conspiracy trigger. Something, but there about. isn't a proof of, um, of all of it. Yeah, I gave you proof. Okay, go up and look. Seriously? 
fuck. Yeah, I know. He's not. He, he found the chat room. Yeah, now he, you, he now hasn't you, seen the chat room yet. I, I've so never he, even looked uh, over there. Till, go I ahead. I'm know. sorry. You got me. Dis- I actually started for the he, first time for the first looking time at those questions. He's seeing the chat room, man. <laughs> and I want to respond to all of them. Right? Yeah, well, there's a war going on in there. Hours to, to, to respond to what's been said. Believe me. But, yeah, but yeah, your yeah, real no point like, being, on, your real there. point being, is that if you're saying I know this, right. you're a fool, right? You're right. a fool no because right. you got to know that you don't know. Right. Yes, so exactly. Stay in the question. That's just what I would like to say about all of this is that nobody knows until we get up in a fucking plane and we fly up high enough into space to actually physically with our own eyes. There is no space. See what's really going on. Right. So, but, right. you know, taking all that into consideration, why is it that nobody has been has done that? And because there is no film, space, you know, there's bending space, there's there's UFOs, there's all kinds of things going on. That we, you know, that we have to consider within this framework. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like we have to keep asking those questions. That's that's just what I want to say. Like, absolutely. And it's not about who's a psyop and who's not a fucking psyop. I'm I'm, I'm reading all this craziness down here. I <laughs> know. Don't read the trolls. Oh, guys, your, It'll ruin your night. <laughs> where are your credentials? Like for real. Where are your fucking credentials? You know. So it's like. We, you could get up, uh, get up here and ask the same questions. You could get up here and, and speak your opinion just you, like the rest of us. But we're. Do you know what my credentials are? Research. And I'm a sentient, homo luminous light being that's been downloaded into this matrix, and that's I'm coming right. from a place of love and compassion and right. sincere seeker narrative, and my You're my intentions are true. Just seeking the truth. That's <laughs> yeah. Doing, that's my that, that's our credentials. Down there say something about we're it. alive and breathing with a conscious you know and it singular a lot uh, yeah for me to do this right now just so you i want you guys to hear that like yeah that's the truth coming out here is not easy it's not something that not it, you know speak to me yeah. at all Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, look at this, like, very angry, dude. I'm not angry at all. I'm full of love and joy and uh, an academic, you know, allure. Well, I think that maybe we've flogged this horse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that we have beat this thing down to the point where uh, people, you know, have very strong opinions. And and it's it's okay uh, for people to have opinions, you know? Oh, absolutely. No. And you you can't allow that to get in your way. You can't allow. I know, you know, you can't answer all those questions. Academic revelry. We're talking (laughs) about about academic. I think you have to just keep one thing in mind that in our, in our world, nobody escapes completely without some psychopathy. Mm -hmm. We've all been affected by it. And so, you can see it on the comments and I have on occasion gotten comments on my YouTube channel and, and I'm just sort oh, of don't like, read them. No, I always, I always, <laughs> don't ruin you. I don't we'll respond. Give you ulcers. But, but, it, but we're, but we're dealing with a lot of unwellness in, in our population and yeah. in population. And none of us even can say we're not affected by it because we're all affected by it. You know, right. So it's hard. It's it's tough. But, you know, you, you, the, the hard thing is to not be triggered. And you said this was conspiracy trigger. And this is so you effectively did that. You know? Yes. So. Yes. I wanted to be a shill by the end of this show, Sean. And uh, I think I think maybe I, I, I'm, I I'm, no, I'm closer. I, no I think idea. I'm closer. I have no idea about whether the earth is flat or, or round. It, the, the, the truth is, I was told the earth was round. So. I believe it. And if I was told the earth was flat when I was young enough, I would have believed that too. Exactly. I would have right. believed whatever I was taught at, at a young enough age. You That's know, exactly I, correct. Yeah. Whatever you're taught at an early it's age, I believe, you know, so, it's all I have no all proof fine. of anything. And, and all I have is, is my, my own, my own mind to, to look at the world as I, as I go through the experience of being alive. And I, I don't have anything. And, and we were all that. blessed with intuition too, that we should do. Yeah. yeah. 
And I know, and I, I want to thank you so much, Sean, for coming on. Folks, this is Sean Young of, of Dune fame, of Blade Runner fame. She's been a replicant. She's lived in the year 10,191, uh, you know, and she's hung out with Jim Carrey and Tone Loke, all right? This woman is uh, just a great person, a great being, and a powerful person that has now come forward out of Hollywood to share her truth and strength with you. So everybody give a big round of applause and cheers for Sean Young uh, for, for her bravery, her bravery of coming forward. And, <clears throat> down, and and then of course, Bob for, you know, standing behind her through all of this and, and, you know, being the strong support and bringing her along. That's thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. Yeah, round of applause great. to everybody it's for great Bob. Out with you guys. <laughs> and then Sarah Lee, really so oh my God, you know, you were a new personality. I mean, we met a couple of times at Free Your Mind. I think we met last year, didn't we? Yeah. 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 And yeah, the year before. And yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, you're, you're a wild one. And I want to pick your brain a yeah. bunch more. And I'm so glad that you, you jumped into this conversation. Right? Yeah, good. Dig into some shiz. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you're so close to, and so is Watson when he's yeah. visiting in this. Uh, and then everyone, uh, Watson Atkinson, uh, you can find him at watsonatkinson.com. And it is, of course, linked right there on freemantv.com because he is my special guest tonight, believe it or not. <laughs> his, his wild card guest. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my wild card guest put it on the line. And we wanted to challenge you. We wanted to make you angry. We wanted to throw topics at you. We could have gone all night. Like I say, we could have gone into Sandy Hook and, you know, did anyone die? We could have covered pulse weapons, taking down the Twin Towers. You know, all the hot topics that everybody says don't talk about. We'll talk about them right here. And so uh, without fear, we wonder without fear. So I'm looking again, at just all of these all questions so coming up and I want to respond to every single one of them, Don't do but it. I can't. If it's so, Don't I have it. a response to all of you. Don't people. do it. <laughs> no, you, you, you we'll can, you can read them the all in the dog. YouTube comments when this goes up. So if you guys want to keep this thing going, uh, not just tonight, but on and on for uh, I'm on my 11th year anniversary, please subscribe to FreemanTV.com. The membership is super inexpensive and it's awesome. And I'll give you my world. Uh, you know, I'll do nothing but work for you. So if you want to chip in, go over to FreemanTV.com. You can donate. We take Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, or you can become a member and get all the great stuff that I'm going to be bringing you because I'm going to bring Monday you night. all kinds of Monday nights. Yeah, it's moving to Monday for the live shows, 9 p.m. Eastern uh, Mondays starting in May. Uh, and uh, we will still have the broadcast going through iTunes, Stitcher, all of that. You'll still get the, the hour and all of that. But if you want to join in the conversation, come on over. So, yeah, well, absolutely. It's going to be a wild ride. And in celebration of Freeman, I'm, I'm just totally honored to be in his company and to having this conversation with everybody. And I've been a huge fan of your work for years now. So it's uh, it's uh, it's 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 very exciting to be here and to have this moment with 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 you and with and with the Freeman community at large. So thank you for that. I knew this was going to be a good time. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Freeman. For Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. See you on the other side. Absolutely. I'll be in touch side. with all of you and all of them, too. Yeah. Keep it flat. <laughs> Ciao for oh. now. All right. Good night, friends. Thank you all so oh, much for know, being here. Yeah. I, I, want, so I, want to say, I just want to end with we never got into the flat prince theory. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah well I get to the beginning of the show to understand yeah. that well, uh, next time the elevator is the devil and if the elevator tries to bring you down just punch a higher floor <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you all next week Bye. <laughs>